and welcome to Candid Conversations with Rainu Dillon, a Building Women Powered Initiative empowering women everywhere. What is Candid Conversation? Well, let's begin with the word candid. Candid means straightforward, frank and truthful. What does conversation mean? Conversation is an informal chat between two or more people where ideas, stories and information is exchanged. So when you bring those two together, you have Candid Conversations with Rainu Dillon, that's me. I believe that every woman has unique life experiences that they could share. It could be personal or professional. By sharing your story on this platform, not only will you find your voice, you will inspire others to be able to find their voice too. Through these personal stories, which are unfiltered, uncensored and straight from the heart, women will empower other women to make incredible things happen. My goal is to empower you, you empower me and together we empower women everywhere. I want every girl and woman to know that her voice can and will change the world. So if you know any woman that has a story to tell, then please reach out to me and my information is on the screen right now. Marilyn Monroe said, give a girl the right pair of shoes and she will conquer the world. I believe that when you give a woman the right voice, she will conquer anything and everything. Let our voices be that revolution for change. After all, a woman is a full circle because within her, she has the power to create, nurture and transform. Enjoy the show. Our guest today is a very special young lady. Not only is she a celebrity artist, she's the mom of a very well-known celebrity in Bollywood and also a personal friend and someone that I grew up with in Mombasa, Kenya. So this story today is very special to me. Reena Malhotra Chopra. Not only she's a self-taught artist and a very popular writer and blogger, she's also the mom of the most beautiful actress in Bollywood, Pariniti Chopra. Reena was born in Singapore, raised in Kenya, and currently lives in India after getting married to a businessman, Pavan Chopra, who hails from a very decorated army family. She is blessed with three children. Her eldest is Pariniti Chopra, who is a film actress in Bollywood and who's passed out from Manchester Business School with a triple honours degree and is also a trained Hindi classical vocalist. Her second child, Sahaj, is an entrepreneur in the F&B industry and her younger, Shivang, is a doctor, is also a trained Hindi classical vocalist. Reena studied in Loretta Convent and Aga Khan Kini Secondary School in Mombasa and then in St. Mary's School in Nairobi before leaving for New Delhi to pursue the architectural apprenticeship before marriage. And then, of course, she got a bachelor's degree in IT and management after her marriage. She hailed from a very diverse climate from the one which she married into. And these differences in culture and thought processes defined her journey till today in India. At the encouragement of her three children, she took up painting at a very mature age and has now made it a very serious getaway from the travels of daily life. The influences for our art range from a vast exposure to different cultures, cities, dreams and art forms as she is widely travelled and she's a staunch supporter of women empowerment. Many of her artworks depict the yearnings and struggles of every girl who aspires to be someone but has met adversities from every form in the society. She dabbles in oils and acrylics but really enjoys the transparency of watercolours as well. She has a varied portfolio of themes with non-conformity to any particular style and her paintings are an outpour of emotions and a challenge to try something new every time and test herself. She has sold her artworks in India, China, Kenya, Paris, USA, Amsterdam, France, England, Dubai, Canada, UK, Bangladesh and India and exhibited her work in many exhibitions all over the world. She's now headed to the World Art Fair being held in Dubai this month. I'm so excited to have this candid conversation with Reena Malhotra Chopra. Let's find out her journey. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. And thanks so much for inviting me to the show. 
And I know you're a very, very busy person in your own right, doing a lot of incredible things. So for you to have invited me, it's quite a big deal. Thanks a lot. No, for me, it's an honor because, first of all, we go back many, many years. And uh, I was talking to your sister, Ashima, the other day, and I was telling her that uh, who would have thought, I thought this trip was so perfect uh, when I went to Kenya that we connected after, I think it was 45 or 47 45 years. 45 years, yes, yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. 45 years. So that's an amazing uh, uh, journey that, you know, we've all reconnected and we hope to keep this connection going. So first of all, thank you. And of so, course, um, I'm always intrigued to uh, hook up with my friends and also find out their journey. And you've had an incredible journey from this little girl in Kenya. Um, I know you were younger than Ashim and me, and uh, we're not going to talk about if we bullied you or not. <laughs> but um, to a celebrity artist today, celebrity mom. So, you know, just like myself, I know there are a lot of other women out there that want to know how. How does Rena balance these two years, celebrity in so many different ways? How do we do it? So let's first begin with your journey. Let's talk a little bit about, I know you were born in Singapore and then raised in Kenya. Um, yes. And then what happened? When did you leave? What was your journey? Yeah, well, yes, you rightly said my father, of course, was an, an insurance man. And uh, he moved to Singapore in 1964 where I was born. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of more stints in different countries, we landed up in Kenya in 1971, I think it was. So right up until the time I went to college, I was there. And then uh, I was sent to India, like Ashima and we were both sent to India to complete mm -hmm. our university, right? Because at that time, Nairobi University didn't really have much uh, right. being offered. Right. Yeah, so that's how I landed up in India. And I did a, a three-year degree in uh, architectural apprenticeship, which is basically we involves the, the uh, you can say, the fundamentals of architecture along with interior design, etc. Yeah. So you got into art at that time. You started, is that kind of, do you feel you got any artistic uh, skills from well, there? No, you know, I think all, oh. all through my life, I was pretty good uh, with a pencil because even when we were in school, we did those all those geography diagrams and stuff in the bio diagrams and all. I had a very clean hand and I used to love sketching, etc. So I think I was one of those nerdy types who really went into detail with every diagram. And that carried forward even later on uh, after I got married and I had kids. So in India, normally when the kids are given projects and all, you know, the mother ends up helping them out a lot. Of with course, them. of course. So, you know, I worked, I, I used to love working with them on their posters, their projects, etc. So I think I always had an inclination, but I didn't really do it or learn it formally. When I got into architectural apprenticeship, yes, we did have one subject which uh, entailed a bit of fine art, but it wasn't learned. It was just like putting your own uh, know-how onto paper when you're actually doing your drafting and all for... Uh, uh, for building, you actually cetera. didn't go and actually do an art class in no, 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 paint no, or no. watercolor paint. Uh, uh, not really. We were taught the fundamentals yeah. of fine art so that we could apply it to our drafting, mm -hmm. etc., mm -hmm. to our uh, architectural diagrams. Right. But it wasn't like proper fine art class or something. Yeah. So, so then you I, get married. I, I, uh, of yeah. course, nosy, nosy woman. Was it love <laughs> marriage or an arranged marriage? <laughs> Well, actually, honestly, it was, uh, I wouldn't call it a love marriage, but it was very much an arranged one because uh, my husband's brother was very well known to my uncle and they used to hang out a lot together. And the Bhavan and his brother used to sing on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, my my brother-in-law was uh, Priyanka's father, in fact. He was an army man, right? So they used mm -hmm. to do a lot of these charity shows for various army uh, welfare uh, associations. You know, like for the AVA women or the AFA women, was the Air Force women or the Army Wives Welfare Staff or charity, uh, right. you know, old age homes, etc. So they used to do a lot of these shows and, that, and they happened to be doing one of those in Delhi when I was in college. So my uncle took me along knowing that I was a real lover of music and all. And uh, so I saw them perform. Uh, Priyanka's dad there and then, okay, who is she? Like he says, she's my uh, brother's daughter. He, they live in Kenya. Oh, okay, fine. All right. We've been looking for a girl for Pawan. Done. It's all done. <laughs> so there was no questions asked. No, would you like to? No, 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 it's done. I'm really done. Forget it. Call, call up your brother. We're going in for it. So it was literally like that. <laughs> wow. But it was, it was amazing. Both of them were such great singers. Pawan in particular sings a lot of Mukesh, who was my favorite singer mm, ever, ever, ever. So I guess, yes, it was you, and a very attractive man, of course, a very nice person. Uh, so it was, it was good. It was, it all kind of worked out. But of course, I, I was, I still was led in, uh, uh, you know, by my uh, throat, you can say, because I wanted to work. I was very good at my work, basically, and I already had some job offers in Delhi, and I really wanted to work. 
So I was in no hurry to get married, but things just happened. They just got fast tracked and things happened so quickly. So I couldn't actually pursue what I had learned, unfortunately. Right. You know? yeah. Just got into domesticity straight away. And I've told you a bit of the background, what kind of uh, right. cultural right. difference it was from Kenya yes. to Amala. Yes, it's, it's a big difference. World. A big difference, yeah. A different yeah. world altogether, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, um, and then uh, I, do you, do, you moved, I think, to Ambala, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Directly to Ambala, which is a very, very small mm-hmm. army cantonment in North India. Okay. It's close to Chandigarh, which is an enterprising place. Mm-hmm. But Ambala itself is a forgotten land. <laughs> There's really nothing happening there because it's a center for the army, center for the air force. It's the closest uh, important strategic air force station to the Pakistan and China okay. border. So development in this area is not allowed. So, so it's you've a been very there ever since. You've been there ever yeah, since, yeah. and uh, and now you have uh, three amazing kids. And uh, so tell us, uh, tell us about your children. Yeah. So well, you know, my my old eldest is uh, daughter Pariniti, and uh, she is she she left uh, Ambala after twelfth uh, grade, which is the A levels. She went to Manchester Business School, did a triple honors degree in finance, economics, Wonderful. and international business. She was I have no idea woman. that Pariniti is a triple honors from Manchester. That's amazing. She was, she was a very, very nerdy child. I mean, she was the kind who was always, you know, had a nose in her books. She didn't, she didn't do all that real fun stuff like, you know, uh, bunking school or being naughty and all that. But she was, she was a fun person. She loved drama. She loved singing. She's a trained vocal uh, vocalist in Hindu in the classical mm-hmm. Hindustani mm-hmm. classical. It's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, when she when she passed out of Manchester, her story is all over the internet because it just happened to be unfortunately during the recession. So her job offer with some of the biggest uh, names that time, Morgan Stanley, etc., mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. fizzled out because uh, permits were not being dished out right. and kids were right. sent. So she had to come back from London, landed up in Bombay. But her degree and her capability got her a job with Yashraj Corporate. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Yashraj, you know, it's it's a global venture right. and all that. Right. It's gigantic. So she was very lucky to get into the corporate sector. So she worked with them as a senior PR executive and manager for two years, in fact. Before, so she didn't even go right into acting. She actually was working behind the scenes. Act, acting was the last thing on her mind. In fact, she's feel offended if somebody is to compare her, you know, let's say uh, her uh, ambitions to Priyanka, say that automatically you'll also get into films. Mm-hmm. She used to feel very offended because she thought she was a very clever girl and she'd definitely become an investment banker or something fancy like that. So that was the last thing on her mind. And she was a little plump, happy-go-lucky, funny kind of a person mm-hmm. jumping on all over the place. Never even interested remotely in acting. She never even considered herself the kind of person who would aspire to be an actress. Not typical heroine and all. Right. But she right. wasn't. You know? So it's not she that she ever told girl. you she was a little yeah. girl. She never once all. told me she's a little girl. I want to be an actress. Never. Never. She always wanted to be an investment banker or something. Okay. She, I told her she's a, she was nerdy with figures. Right. You right. know. Even in her A levels, she was actually awarded a zero point one percent of her merit award for, by the president for her ninety seven percent in economics, etc. Amazing! She was that kind of a kid, yeah, she was that kind of a kid. So this thing. Is I think her personality. Thing. You know, you talk about her being this fun spirited person. It still comes through now in all the shows that yeah. she does. Um, yeah, yeah. The reality she's show she's doing right now, you can just truly see. And I think she's also very emotional. She cries when yeah. she talks about you. She's a very sensitive, very emotional person. Anybody's sad story really gets to her. Yes. And she generally affects her. And she ends up helping all these people because she just feels so much for them. She, you know, she always feels that anybody who's underprivileged needs to be helped out. And she does it on the on the quiet. She won't even let anybody know about it. That's so she's wonderful. just that sort of a person. Luckily, and actually, all my kids are like that. All three of so them she's are like that. The, she's the eldest, right? She's, she's the, the eldest. eldest. Yeah, and then yeah. you have two two and boys, then, two sons. Yeah, and then I have two boys. Sahaj is a uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's got into the F and B industry, and he has his uh, brands running uh, based out of Delhi. Uh, one one is a fast food and uh, Momo bubble tea brand called Fat Taika. Mm. Okay. And another one is uh, he explored the uh, very typical old fashioned uh, Mughlai Indian food. You know our roots. From our okay. roots, from our right. forefathers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's called Old Delhi and it offers all the very traditional recipes in Indian and Mughlai food. So he's working on those right now. Yeah. 
and he also introduced uh, Millie's Cookies brand from UK into India. It was the first one to do okay. so. Wonderful. Was already run very successfully in UK, and then he brought it to India as well. Amazing. So he's taken that direction, yeah. And my little one is a uh, he's a doctor, not so little anymore, but he's a doctor. <laughs> and <laughs> now he's going to go ahead for his masters, etc. So here, raising three amazing children. When did yeah. you figure out, you know what, I have it in me to do this art. I mean, today you're a celebrity artist, you know, you're soul paintings worldwide, taking your work everywhere. When did that, you know, women always wonder, you know, we spend a lot of our time raising our children and putting our dreams and passions aside. But then there's that always true. that awakening sometimes you get and some women never pursue it. So I think I would yeah. like to know. When did that happen to you? And when did you say, no, you know what? It's time for me. It's time for Rena now. When did that happen? Well, you see, honestly, I, I, I would say this much because I got married to a very traditional family in the sense right. they were from an army background, etc. But my mother-in-law was a traditional lady. She wanted somebody to run, look after the house, look after mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the family, look after everything. So I had to put all that in a backseat, whatever I'd learned till then. But all these years, I think if you've raised your kids right, they turned out to be amazing human beings. And honestly, it was these three kids five years ago who suddenly said, Mom, we're all grown up now. We don't really need you the way you, you think. You don't have to be waiting hands and feet, uh, foot on us, you know. <laughs> we're doing our own things. It's high time you also got out of that, you know, drudgery of just being in the kitchen all the time yeah. and just, you know, yeah. hanging around Papa and just waiting for us to, you know, our meals and stuff. Do something for yourself now. And uh, Pariniti, in fact, was the one uh, who coordinated from Bombay and she got these boys traveling to Chandigarh. She says, mom loves uh, drawing, etc., painting, whatever. Let's get her back into that as a hobby. Let her develop a hobby of her own rather than, you know, spending all her time just hanging around waiting for all of us. So these guys ended up on my birthday, surprising me with a gigantic room full of uh, artist supplies. They had no clue what an art. Yeah, they don't have no, they had no clue what an artist needs. So they walk into the store and tell them, kya kya chahi for an artist? What do they need? He says, all right, they need easels and canvas and paints and all sorts and pencils, etc. They said, okay, pack the whole lot. Whatever you can think of that an artist would need, just give it all to us. So this so is my only five years ago. This is five years ago. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I walked into that room and I saw it all there, like for a second, I was overwhelmed, of course, but my heart sank. I said, these kids have done so much and they spent so much money and I haven't picked up a pencil in years. What am I going to do with all this? Yeah. But it, that's how it started. It was literally that. It wasn't even me saying, oh, I need to do something for myself. Mm -hmm. I think quite so enterprising. Again, I was, as usual, putting myself, you know, uh, behind everybody else, you know. And it was them who pushed me that, no, forget it. you got to take the time out. You've got to do this for yourself, for your own sake. You need, it's going to be your pastime, your hobby, your meditation, your me time, basically, you know, because you're just always just waiting for us to leave, for us to come back. And you need to now have something more to look forward to, something that you do for yourself. And honestly, it's been the best thing that have ever happened to me. Now, then, actually, know, a lot of people I have would have done that. Yeah. On my own. yeah, a lot of people would have done that and then just left their paintings in the room, you know, or hung them around the house. You've gone to another level. So, oh. yeah, so I also started thinking that that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I just kept painting. And honestly, like my kids, they laugh. They said, Mom is a uh, you know painting factory, the may amount she churns out. Because mm. I took it for with a vengeance. I thought, mm -hmm. I think maybe I finally found something that I could call my own, where I could pour out my own emotions right. or whatever. Right. Right. I literally went at it. I literally went at it. And maybe the practice and all made it better and better and better. And people, you know, anybody who saw my work and all would really appreciate it. And then uh, my daughter said, why don't you stop putting on Instagram and all? Let people see it. Why are you just hiding mm -hmm. it in your mm -hmm. room? You know, I had a makeshift studio. But in this old bedroom, I converted into a studio where I, I could just paint, you know. I would give it at least a couple of hours in the day when you know I was free from everything, and it kept piling up. So she says, "Why, woman? You're going to keep hiding in that room? Why don't you stop putting it out there? Let least people see it and you know appreciate it." And once I did that, uh, people actually started messaging me hmm. that they actually sell your paintings. We love them and we'd like to purchase them. So it just all happened. It was all honestly very undeliberate, but a very good turn of events uh, finally. And then when you do start putting it out there, then people notice, then right. curator yeah. started messaging me, would you like right. to join us you know, in our exhibitions? We're putting a, a, you know this show together in Delhi, in Chandigarh. 
somebody from Paris reached out to me that we have a yoga center for which we need uh, paintings and so things like Wonderful. that. Wonderful. Yeah. And yeah, now so you're uh, this famous artist. You've got amazing work. And looking at your work, uh, we're going to be sharing this on the screen. Uh, a lot of your work is based on women empowerment and about women. Yes. So Absolutely. let's talk about this first picture. Um, yeah. And uh, it's about, you have this woman's face. And what I'm, yeah. I'm not an artist, but I'll tell you what I see is I see a woman, beautiful woman's face and then her eyebrows. You have the blue and the yellow. So tell us a little bit, what's the story behind this one? See, what I honestly feel that every woman, and I've been through it to a certain extent myself, nothing deliberate, right. Right. which is the difference of cultures and thought right. processes and all, did um, uh, you know, uh, force me to sort of unbecome Rina Malhotra and become Rina Chopra, if you know what, what I mean. Right. I was right. a sports person. I was an absolute tomboy. I, was, I had no care in the world. And suddenly I had to be a very Indian bahu. I had to stick to tradition. I had to take care of the family, cook, cook which I never did it, had ever done in my life. You know, just become very domesticated right. and put a lot of my passions aside. You know, there was there was no frivolity. There was even reading a book was sort of at that time, at least by mm -hmm. my mother, and I thought of as a waste of time. You should right. be doing stuff in the kitchen. You're wasting time even reading right. a book. Right, right. So, you know, so all that, I think, came out on, on canvas for me. And mm -hmm. for me, again, you know, all these stereotypical things about women and how they should look or how should they, they right. should be or what are the inhibitions or restrictions, you know, in mean, that patriarchal society where women are just supposed to be in the kitchen, not bothering about looks, not bothering about uh, education or not really doing things for themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is all that. So I'm in this thing, I'm actually expressing that every woman who looks in the uh, mirror, she might be just, you know, she might be dark. She might not be, you know, a, a very typical uh, looking, you know, uh, in uh, quotes, the, you know, the fair, beautiful, right, right. typical, uh, you know, uh, woman. But every woman, whatever the complexion, whatever she looks like, whatever her background, whatever the cultural uh, background she's from, she is beautiful from the inside and out. She has these capabilities which have either been suppressed, mm -hmm. you know, not allowed to come out. And she stares in that mirror and she sees somebody, she sees a beautiful person because she sees her, the, her own inside. inside. She's not seeing what the world is looking at. She's seeing herself as this person who is beautiful. She's colorful. She has this very, very outgoing nature. She needs us. She just needs to, you know, spread her wings. She wants to learn. She wants to educate herself. She wants to literally let her hair down. If you see the feathers, it's just letting the hair down. Hair down. Okay. You know, and finding her wings, finding a way to fly. And just saying, I'm I'm as beautiful as anybody. I'm all I can also blossom. Just give me a chance. You know that sort of a thing. That's a beautiful story, yeah. And then the next one, you have a silhouette of a face with um, a book and glasses. Mm. So what's the story behind this one? Yeah, so <laughs> I I would be I would be cheeky enough to say that's actually me. <laughs> okay. In this in the sense. <laughs> I was also this young girl, this 21 year old who got married mm -hmm. and whose only passion was, again, I was quite a nerd, reading, you know, things like that. Right. right. And, and I brought a whole lot of, I think, a thousand plus storybooks into my, into my house, which has actually made a joke of even today. The arena came piled, armed with books and all, <laughs> instead of clothes and jewelry. <laughs> that, much, you know? that was my passion. But like I told you, um, when you're in a household, in a joint family, in a household uh, with so many members of the family or with mm -hmm. a traditional mm -hmm. mo mother-in-law running the place, these things were actually con thought of as being a bit of a waste of time, you know? Right. So, so that's, that's actually me. That's a distorted Rina Malhotra, mm -hmm. you know? That's a distorted who just wanted to block out. Can you see that? Yes. Block out yeah. voices from her head telling her she can't do that and she can't do this. And she just wanted to read, she wanted to write, she wanted to study, she wanted to, you know, just bring herself up with the world and block out all kinds of voices who said you can't do this and that. So that's actually me. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And I think lots of women are like that in the yes. world. Yeah. There's that's so true. many women who, who yeah. come with certain dreams and then because they have to adapt to a new family or a new kind of a atmosphere, they have to change all their thinking. And you know, it's funny you say that in the group that we've started, the Building Women Empowered, that's the message that comes through with so many people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I've noticed the trend is that women start discovering themselves much later on or, or 
eventually that awakening happens where you said, I've had enough. Now it's yeah. time for me. You know, it happens you know, in your forties, fifties, but it happens. You know, people just get tired. That's mostly I think it happens post forty-five because by that time, those yeah. who have allowed themselves to be bogged down by domesticity, by right. that time the, right. the kids have flown the nest. Or, you know, the elderly have unfortunately passed on or yeah. maybe passed the baton right. to them. And now they're running the house or whatever. And they have the time or mm. even the maturity now to deal with things a lot better, balance things a lot better. They're no longer scared of their peers. They've, in fact, probably sort of worked out something mm -hmm. with them, made a space for themselves or time for themselves so that they can balance both the worlds themselves as well as the family. Whereas when you're very, very young, you don't even know how to do that. I mean, I had no clue how to do anything. I just did whatever I was told to do. You know, no, no arguments, no questions right. asked. Right. By the time you reach the 50, you realize, okay, half your life is gone. Maybe three quarters of your life is gone. And we really haven't done anything that we can call ourselves. Right. You know, we've right. always been a wife. We've always been a mother. We've always been a daughter. But when are we going to be us? You know? Yes, absolutely. And I really yeah. hope that the next generation can change this or the current generation can I just start already, doing what they want to do. I think they already have. They already do. And the best thing about this generation is uh, they actually encourage their parents to do yes. stuff as well. Yes. Because we yes. still tend to hold ourselves back due to whatever, um, you know, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z reasons. But they say, why? Why can't you travel? Why can't you do this? Why can't you go out? Why can't you dress well? Why can't you wear the stuff you want? Why can't you visit the places? My daughter keeps telling me you shouldn't have a regret on your deathbed saying, oh, I wanted to go to Switzerland and I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to so and so and I didn't. Do it all. Do it today because you don't know what tomorrow is all about. Right. So That's she in fact pushes me so much because every time I get stressed out about a situation I, and I call her up, I get the scolding of my life because she says, Mom, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, Tachwood, you have the means, you have the capability, you have the talent, you have people who support you, you have a family who supports you. All you need to do is get your head around, uh, wrapped around and just go and, and do, just it. do it. Right. The only thing that's stopping you now is your mind because you can't blame anybody else. You can't blame us. You can't blame any old, you know, oldies. They've all gone. They've all passed on. So now the only thing holding yourself back is your own thought process. And if you if you're worried about anybody else not uh, being with you and it just just it's fine. Just tell them I've got to do this. I've got to do this right. for myself. I think it's important to learn to say no. Just yeah, learn to yeah. say no. It's, it's time for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We struggle with that because you're trying to fulfill. We want to please everyone. And absolutely. in the process, we don't please ourselves. We so. don't please ourselves. Absolutely. So this generation is already there, honestly. Yes. Yes. They're already pushing their parents to do it. And they're doing it themselves. And I'm sure they will, uh, even with their own kids, it'll start even sooner. Absolutely. Because that's how they've you've been brought up and all. That's how I can think. go on and on about your paintings. Um, I know you're on your way to a show. So this last one I want to talk about is uh, cityscapes. You have a the face, the rainbow colors on the face. Is this Rina as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Rina. It's Rina because honestly, Rina wasn't that flamboyant <laughs> in a sense. This, this now here, what I'm talking about again is uh, the difference between a small town life and a city life. Mm -hmm. You see. Like now I got, I came from a city, got married in a small town kind of a place and a very, very laid back, old fashioned small town. And then I, then I think that when in a city, in a city, when you're looking from the, as an outsider into the, the mystery of a city, basically, you know, what lies beyond those walls? What lies in those high uh, rises and all what's happening there? What kind mm -hmm. of life is being led? What are the women going through? Are they happy? Are they not? Are they having this? really amazing colorful life where they're doing they're bad you know are they are they good girls are they bad girls are they really doing what they wanted to do you know so that's why i call it colorful life in the city mm -hmm. because you know in i i personally know so many stories you know about cities where things go on that you can't even uh, imagine and then right. you think oh my god coming from a small town is that even possible how does that even happen so now you just kind of yearn to have that colorful life where Girls have no inhibitions. They're following their dreams. They're having fun. They're having a drink in the evening. They're dancing. They're having, you know, they're going out with their friends. They're working. They're pursuing their dreams, etc., etc. So that was like, you know, the, the the opposite side of the thing for me coming, right. from, you know, being in a restrictive small town kind of scenario. Well, you know, I commend you for your work. I mean, it's such unusual work, and to be able to see your how you're empowering these stories about women and. 
truly touching on the sensitive points about what women feel and many times they don't express. And that's why I love art. I'm not an artist by any means. I do art for kids. But I also yeah. find that even doing it for children, they express their emotions through color, through what they put on Absolutely. paper. And you can figure out exactly what's going on in a child's mind when you just give them a choice of colors. You know, Absolutely. whether they pick multicolors or they pick only one color to, to do their work. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah, that's one It, that's what's in, uh, whether you pick up a pen or whether you pick up a brush it's basically right. your emotions that get transferred to paper or canvas like even when i write i am a blogger as well right i was going to ask you I that have, i have a blog so a lot of my stories there are again experiences um i i translate some of my weird experience even through humor so mm -hmm. that you know because i i love i i love funny people i love you know being humorous and i think that's the best thing you know laugh about your situation because the, if you don't you just kind of it's it's like a vortex you just get pulled into it so i you think turn it into a story turn it into a journey yeah yeah yeah, yeah. laugh about it basically right. yeah. Um, we definitely want to be able to know that uh, we're going to be sharing your blog pages and your instagram pages here soon oh. soon so one of the things i know everybody is again intrigued to know So Rina celebrity artist she's also a mom of a celebrity daughter right um how do you how did you feel when Pariniti because uh, a lot of you know our culture is very different a lot of people when they their daughters express they want to get into bollywood the first thing is oh no you can't do it and that's a very stressful journey to take because even if you um you know are related in the family to anyone that's already in the industry it's still your own journey and not everyone so, makes it um so Don't when Pariniti came home and, and and got this opportunity how what did you encourage her did you tell her no and then how do you handle this because you know we know that there's just so much written all the time and so yeah. many judgments made i mean she's amazing and i love her personality and she is one of the few um actresses that shows you can, you feel that that is the real pariniti you actually seeing and that she's not putting on to be someone else but how do you yeah. handle that as a mom well, i mean coming from well, mumbai you know we grew up in a gossip town right so <laughs> <laughs> well you're absolutely right you know um in pariniti's uh, situation what happened was like you said she already had a cousin who was in the industry mm -hmm. when priyanka actually went into the uh, industry it was it was very different because that was the first in the family right but she also she also went in in a very secure path she went in as miss world so she was already protected she right. was she had already made a name for herself right. she was untouchable already if you know what i mean yes because no, normally uh, unfortunately girls who come from small towns who have you know who want to get into uh, this kind of an industry they have to face a lot of problems right. all the way you know Absolutely. it you know yeah so, uh, fortunately priyanka went in the right way and then parniti also went in with her education first she worked for two years so she had already managed to impress people or get, gain that respect that comes with uh with an educated capable mm -hmm. kind of person you know you don't you don't come across as um you know one of those uh, i i don't even know how to call it just one of those kids who just dreamt big and weren't serious about anything right. else except getting on right. except fame etc she didn't want it in the first place so i think that was her strongest point mm -hmm. she didn't yearn for it so she was in a very solid space right she had she had confidence in her uh, capabilities as a, as in uh, in her education and and her work etc mm -hmm. so when this was offered to her first of all she herself said are you nuts <laughs> i i never even thought of doing this and, I, and i'm not an actress how i've never learned acting i've never done anything so how can you even see see me in that kind of a uh, you know scenario i can't see myself so is it okay uh, you know we have we our work is spotting talent and we can see it in you mm -hmm. just find out, just ask yourself are you ready to you know uh, sort of trust us mm -hmm. and come come on board with us and since it was yashra she was already there for two years and during her stint in these two years we already you know had the fortune uh, to speak to her or to know that yash she had her back at all times right. Right. you would actually you know and uh, but still she said look i know whatever it is but i do come from a small town from a very traditional family i cannot say yes until my dad gives the approval so yes she says all right let me speak to him on the phone so she says you can speak on the phone all the time but uh, what all you want but i need to go and face him i need to see his facial reaction <laughs> so that i'm sure that you know he is not absolutely 
uh, flabbergasted and if she he says yes to me whatever his response is i need to see it up front i want to see if it's really uh, right true you know so it's all right fly in fly out they literally told just fly into ambala talk to your parents get their permission and come back and uh, in the mean and uh, this <laughs> she landed up at 11 o'clock at night on january 4th which is one of the coldest days in india 11 o'clock and I can you imagine your daughter suddenly walks in because she didn't tell us she was coming she called my my son that mm-hmm. I'm coming in for this reason whatever and I need to meet mom and dad come and pick me up he picks her up from the airport she comes in and we open the door and we are shocked and then she stands there and says okay dad this is what's happened yes she has offered me a three film deal with uh, yashraj uh, uh, films and mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to uh, see if you're okay with it or can I go ahead or not So yes is that what you want to do she says i don't know if i can do it or not but they seem to feel i can do it so i really don't mind giving it a try if mm-hmm. you're okay so we said we find look it's your journey you know what you need to do you you've studied you have your degree you have your work experience and all going for you if you feel that this is something you can do great otherwise you have something to fall back upon right. anyway so that's what she says exactly that so but i just want to explore i just want to see if it's something that i i am capable of doing and would i like to do it as mm-hmm. well and in the meantime just she also called uh, pawan and says chopra ji to see the chopra to see the chopra don't worry mere beti hai i will look after her just don't worry about anything you know so when you have that kind of assurance and right. all you know that it's in a safe and secure place she's being looked after by one of the biggest global film company in the world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, then you you think it's okay because sometimes you do need to you need to change your thought process you need to take a risk in life only yeah. then will you grow only then will you explore new uh, dimensions right so do that, that's the answer do you think uh, pavan's answer would have been the same had she been not wor- with rahi ashraj and it just had been somebody else No no I think I think it'd been okay because the offer yeah. came from your shop basically okay. even if she had been working somewhere else or doing something else and such 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 a respected person right. uh you know who, who promised uh, the daughter Did it uh, ever her. dawn on you oh my god she's going to an industry where there is nothing but gossip and you know so much nonsense written and you know you guys are a very reputable family uh you know it, it um is- Yeah it is a very very um uh, public space you can say yes yeah. but honestly tell me which sector is it which doesn't have its issues right. you know yeah. when you when you come to when you come to politics or when you come to a uh, favoritism when you come to all this bureau whatever it's 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 in every right. sector it's right. in every single sector this just happens to be more public than others so yes it's like washing your dirty clothes or whatever in in the public but uh, i suppose there are pros and cons to everything and you mm-hmm. just ultimately learn how to deal with it initially yes, we would you hit the nail on the head. Head. learning how to deal with it is so important yes. initially we would of course get a little upset with things that are written and you know we'd mm-hmm. call her up and she says mom that until i confirm anything just don't believe anything you write right. yes anything you need to know will come from me this is all media this so is all that trust gospel. factor is very important in your children absolutely absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's very important to have that trust and full faith in them to understand that you know yeah. and if you've raised them well enough they'll come back and tell you themselves that's no exactly. need so fortunately i think we raised them well enough and then their own they're good human beings my kids are good human beings and very very mature and uh, not easily taken in by any of these you know um, what's that word mal these little uh, fickle kind of situations yeah. around and on right. they they think they think they know and then they decide which is good enough for us because honestly you know we can trust them to make the right decision and when and we're always there right even if they need any help we're there but um, they have to live their own lives and uh, luckily they take they make their own good decisions and we're always there uh, as a fall back right so absolutely I and i always that's my message to parents as well let them find their own journey but yeah, always you know uh, you know you see this in all these movies and stuff they'll say abhi darwaza band hai you didn't listen to me jao karo jo bhi karna you should never keep those doors closed they, they should always know that they can come home and yeah, yeah. because that's your safe haven is your home right the way you've been raised but let them find their own journey even if it's something only- you don't approve it doesn't matter they have to yeah. find their own space the absolutely they can only move on if they know that you know there's somebody behind them right with the, with a cushion for them always absolutely absolutely so yes. um where is reena heading now i mean reena is this amazing artist mom 
You know, you've got it all figured out. Now, where's Rina? Where does Rina see herself? I, think, I honestly think you're giving me too much credit for stuff. No, I don't think so at all. I don't think I, so at all. You know, I, I work with kids and parents all day long, little, little ones, and I, I see so much potential in the children. And yeah. uh, what worries me sometimes is I see these little kids that are showing true talent, but maybe yeah, yeah. their parents are in a completely different field. And yeah, yeah. sometimes I see the parents are not encouraging art or music at all. Oh, yeah, before we um, wrap up music. So now I, yeah. I figure out where Pariniti gets her. I, all your kids sing, which means Pavan sings. So you yeah. train them in music, right? He's a singer in the family, yes. And, yes. and both two of my children are um, uh, trained uh, uh, formally in mm -hmm. Hindustani classical vocal. Sahaj also sings amazingly, but he's a typical Punjabi putter and he loves his Punjabi. So he's a great singer, but he hasn't formally trained, nor does he perform, etc. But Pariniti and Shivam have both performed yes. on a national level. They've gone on to win at the national district level. They've gone on to Delhi to represent the state in uh, singing competitions. She's got, a, she's got, a, she's got a beautiful voice. Yes, beautiful voice. Yeah. So I see this with parents. You know, they're, uh, they're not into art and music. They just want to focus on studies all the time. And for me, art and music is just so important. And mm. I think singing is... It's just wonderful when you can. I mean, I yeah. wish I could sing. I only know how. To. I wish I could sing, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I'm a Kansen. I'm a Kansen, but I'm not a Kansen. I'm a Kansen. I can take out the slightest little uh, uh, faults in somebody singing, but myself, I'm totally basura, which is so sad. <laughs> yeah, I I'm wish terrible I at singing. But I incorporate <laughs> music in everything that we do at school. Even when they're doing their art, I bring music into it because I just think it, it also ignites so many emotions within yourself. So, totally, totally. Yeah. So and I think uh, it's where you can disappear, honestly. You can just oh, yeah, totally, totally, yes. So where does Rina see us? Where's Rina going now? Where's Rina uh, going? Right now, Abito, with great difficulty, I'm going to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen anything beyond that. I'm so nervous about this because it's the first globe, really huge global platform mm. that I'm going to. Right. My other two states in China or Paris were on a smaller level. But this is a, a platform which is an international one, 51 countries participating, multiple mm -hmm. artists who come back every year. So they're mostly professional. 90% of them are professional returning artists who do it world over. And they, you know, they're always spinning around. For me, it's a first. So it's going to be a great learning experience. I'm actually going for the exposure to meet people, to network, mm -hmm. to know what goes on. You know, if you is want this where people can buy art as well? They can buy their of course. art Yes, well. yes. It's, it's a formal exhibition where, uh, and uh, it has uh, all kinds of ranges. So it's right from affordable art to expensive art. So all, all genres of people who want, you know, want to spend a little bit, get something for the bedroom, fine. If they're collectors and they want to really go big, even that's available. So it's generally a uh, way diverse. also take uh, contracts, like somebody says, this is what I want for my... Okay. Houses, oh, you really? can do that as yes, well. yes, plenty. Lots of people ask for certain things, especially you know, uh, people who believe in uh, religion or Vastu yes. or whatever. Yes. They ask for the Buddha and the Ganeshas to happen. Some people have asked me for different sizes of various genres, it could be a, a seascape, a cityscape. People who love travel have asked me for travel uh, paintings of different cities. Paris is one of the favorite, and or mm -hmm. Venice is one of the favorite uh, subjects. So I do that and I welcome that because it gives me a challenge, honestly. If somebody tells me, this is our room, this is the decor, we want something with these colors, this size, this kind of a thing, it, it gets your mind thinking, you know, it allows right. you to be more creative. So I, I love creative. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love well, like, I can't even tell you what a pleasure it's been to, to get to know you more. I mean, I knew you were your kid, but I knew your sister more. And now it's just so amazing know. to know no, no, uh, I, the different parts of Rina. And uh, and hats off to you. You know, I mean, I think you've you your um, parenting skills really show through Pariniti and um, also your own work in empowering women with everything that you do. And I've read your blogs and I hope you can continue sharing them on our platform. Uh, in closing, what would your message be to all the women out there that are, who still haven't done what they want to do? Well, I honestly, I, I think that it's never too late and it is too late. If you don't start today, you might never ever find the courage to do it. And mm -hmm. then life will just pass you by because we allow things to take over uh, our lives and we forget. We sort of just start flowing down the stream and mm -hmm. we, we don't get a chance to, you know, grasp the, the sides and stabilize ourselves. So that's the most important thing. Find that, find that path. Get the courage to do it. Talk to your family about it. This is what I want to do. And I am going to be taking out time for it. I am going to be going out for uh, going away for a while. I am going to be doing my own thing. So 
uh, and i'm sure i think once you take yourself seriously the others will take you seriously too so i and think, I think what's also important is people should not put a a money value to it because everything is not done just for money you know i think no, people should do things all. for passion you know you if you do something passionately and if people see that and love it they will offer them but that's not your first uh, yes. go to thing the first thing is to discover yourself discover what you want to do right. and just start doing it everything else is a side effect you know it's it's like right. a what there's a good side effects if you get monetary monetization out of it but even if you don't i'm sure most of the ladies uh, are already capable or already working women they're doctors they're whatever they just need to maybe find, uh, find another creative line which is only their right. own right and even if they don't come from a very very um, uh, i would say established kind of a background they can do it through their own art or their own creativity they can make that happen if mm -hmm. they're lacking in any way you know uh, they can actually do it for themselves they don't have to wait for family to provide for them they can provide for themselves if they really find their genre they find right. their own space yeah no thank you so much it's been a pleasure thank you thank you so much thank for having you. me here you have so many um uh, uh, such a you know you i would say poncho ladies on your uh, group and i don't think i'm even a percentage small percentage of that but i'm so grateful for you uh, uh, to uh, for having me on this no it's been a pleasure thank you so much right and keep doing the great work you do honestly all the diverse things that you do are very informative very interesting very relevant and very important to society today so thank keep you. doing thanks for it thank you you're one hell of a strong woman <laughs> mabasa <laughs> yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely mambasa churns out amazing ladies that's why i tell you people don't hear about mambasa but i'm telling you i always say churns out some good stuff true yeah. true true absolutely right then lovely talking to you yeah, bye too. i hope you enjoyed today's show as much as i did and you've got to know reena malhotra chopra on a very personal level as you can see she has taken up her passion of art and she's continued to make it super successful and we wish her nothing but the best i will leave you with this thought aspire yourself to inspire yourself to be better so ladies if you haven't been able to pursue your passion as of yet then what are you waiting for hopefully reena's words has inspired you and will inspire you to do this today until next week keep smiling and have a great week